Thank you for joining us to, today for this. Uh, this is our first mini online seminar series from for 2023. Remember, this is an educational partnership between ISN and Glomcom. Great. OK, thank you. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about translating new clinical trials in IgA nephropathy. Uh, thank you so much to ISN and GlomCon for inviting me to be uh, part of this speaking series. Um, today, I'm well, first some disclosures. Uh, and the exciting thing is now I have more and more disclosures, which is uh, reflects the fact that there is uh, a real thirst for research and development of new treatments in IgA nephropathy. Today, I'm going to talk uh, around a case um, to help run through how I approach uh, treatment decisions and how I interpret clinical trials in the context of specific patients. I'll go through the best evidence to date and spend a bit of time on pipeline uh, of new emerging therapies. And some of you, if some of you have heard any of my talks before, you may recognize some elements, but what's exciting is that actually um, there are data that are changing now on a weekly basis. And so there are updates throughout uh, the presentation with uh, the newest trial data that have been published. So this is a, uh, an example of a uh, patient whom I have uh, followed for some time, a uh, some of the demographics are changed for anonymity. Um, this is a 24-year-old woman born in China who moved to Canada at age 16. She was noted to have hypertension at a walk-in clinic when she uh, presented for an upper respiratory tract infection and ultimately was referred to a nephrologist. Uh, and at the time of the referral, she had a blood pressure of 160 over 90, a creatinine of one or 89 micromoles per liter, which translated in her case to a GFR over 100. Um, and her proteinuria was 1.8 grams per day. She was started on an ACE inhibitor and sent for a kidney biopsy. And when she underwent kidney biopsy, she was found to have mesangial proliferation, endocapillary proliferation, as well as segmental sclerosis, and uh, a few crescents here or there as well. So what would my next steps be? Well, in keeping with uh, recommendations in KDGO guidelines, my next step would be risk stratification, um, just to provide her with some information about the relative risk of disease progression over time. And I think this is very important, both so that the clinician and the patient uh, have a mental idea of what's at stake here. Um, what can the patient expect uh, in terms of future prognosis? So if I plug in all of these uh, clinical and pathologic variables into the online uh, international IgA nephropathy uh, prediction tool, which is available at QXMD, uh, you, know, you estimate a, a risk of progression, and you can actually toggle and select what horizon or time frame interests you. Generally, I'll do five years. And if I input all of these data, you'll see a result like uh, what I show on the bottom and indicates that this patient has a risk of a 50% decline in GFR or progression to end-stage kidney disease at five years of 20.2%. Like that's pretty high. And I think, you know, just seeing a, a normal GFR, uh, you know, you may not um, actually uh, guess that the risk of progression is actually that high. Of note, um, this tool is uh, interesting to kind of play around if you want to toggle and see how other variables impact risk. So if, for instance, I indicated that this individual was Caucasian race, that risk would actually be 10%. Um, this tool was developed engaging a multi-racial uh, cohort, although it wasn't perfect representation, certainly uh, there was good Asian representation uh, in the cohort. And actually, I know, you know how we utilize race in terms of prediction is a very important topic for discussion that I, I won't get into today. But the goal of uh, the, out, the bottom line of this adjustment is actually not uh, 
penalizing uh, individuals of Asian, of particularly Pacific Asian descent, um, because they actually may have a higher risk of, of progression. And so this is a prediction tool and a race adjustment that actually works in favor of recognizing their high risk, as opposed to downplaying risk, as we've seen in other uh, estimating equations.